Neil Brown just has that it factor, I believe. He's like, called into the program. Everybody in the Big 12 is going to know his name, and all the quarterbacks are going to feel his pain. That underdog so, mentality has always been big for West Virginia. We're just heartbroken that we were not good at our jobs. He is the modern-day Don Nealon. Trust the climb. And now it's time for the Country Roads webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into the TCU preview edition of the Country Roads webcast. As always, I'm your host, Jordan Cruz, and as you can see, I'll be doing uh, this episode by myself. I've uh, been a crazy uh, schedule for all three of us, me, Bradley, and Steven. Um, as I'm sure you've noticed, I haven't been on, you know, past, you know, couple episodes, and it's been hard for all three of us to get our work schedule aligned. It's been a crazy, you know, couple of weeks, but um, we're hoping that uh, everything will be back to normal with this upcoming uh, TCU reaction show that will be live streaming there on our Facebook and YouTube on Sunday, and you can follow our social medias to find out when that'll be. But in the meantime, it's uh, just me here for the TCU preview that you'll be seeing if you're uh, checking us out on our YouTube or Facebook or hearing if you're checking us out on any of the podcast platforms on which you can find all of the country webcasts on all of those, um, Spotify, Anchor, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, you name it, you can find the Country Roads webcast there. Uh, just search for us, uh, subscribe to us, and uh, leave us a review if you'd like. That always helps as well. But that being said, before we get into TCU specifically, we had planned to do a uh, mid-season review during the bye week here on the Country Roads webcast, but as I said, you know, schedules just could never line up. Never did really get that to materialize, but I had dug up some offensive comparison stats I wanted to go over. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that here on this on this episode before we get into TCU because I think it's a little bit interesting and, you know, kind of tells you where this offense stands. I think a lot of us have thought that this may be a historically bad West Virginia offense. And for me, the one offense that I compared it to was the 2010 West Virginia offense. So I wanted to look that up, that 2010 team. You know, the infamous offensive coordinator, Jeff Mullen, calling those plays, and that team had a lot of talent and really underachieved offensively to go along with what was a top-10 statistic, statistically defense uh, that year. And uh, that's kind of similar to what this year had been, especially early in the season when the defense was really performing strongly. So uh, that's kind of what I'll, what led me down this rabbit hole. And then I decided, well, what were some other years that we struggled in? I brought in uh, the 2013 year, uh, Dana's third year when West Virginia went 4-8, and eight, and then Rich Rod's first year, 2001, when West Virginia went 3-8. and eight. So you got the 2010 struggling offense, you know, ended up with a good record that year, and then two down years in 2001 and 2013. And I looked up the offensive stats to compare to this year's uh, 2021 West Virginia team. So without further ado, let me pull out my handy-dandy notes here and let's uh, get into these stats. We'll just go chronologically here um, as soon as I can get it pulled up. I'll start with the 2001 West Virginia team and then move on to the uh, 2010 and 2013 and then get into uh, what West Virginia has done so far this year here in 2021. So starting with the 2001 West Virginia offense, uh, they averaged 21.4 points per game. 181 rush yards per game, 164 pass yards, 345 total yards. They gave up 23 sacks and uh, scored 28 touchdowns. Then 2010, now this is the uh, much uh, maligned Jeff Mullen, and rightfully so, we don't have to get into that, the infamous uh, Jeff Mullen. But uh, 25.2 points per game, 159 rush yards per game, 213 passing yards per game. 372 total yards per game, but here's the kicker. They gave up 45 sacks that year. 45. And all scored 42 touchdowns. So more sacks than touchdowns. That's 45 ridiculous. Uh, 2013 offense, 26.3 points per game, 148 rush yards per game, 262 pass yards per game, 411 total yards. They only gave up 16 sacks, and they actually scored 38 touchdowns. So... Uh, 2010 and 2013 scored a decent amount of touchdowns, but the sacks in 2010 is ridiculous, 45. I mean, that's more than the 2001 offense and 2013 offense combined. So that's really where you struggled there, it seems like, pass protection or long developing pass plays that Jeff Mullen tried to draw up. Either way, you want to spin it, not good. And then this year, 2021 offense, uh, 28.3 points per game. I know probably higher than uh, many would be would believe, but uh, the Long Island numbers kind of skew that a little bit. I'll, I'll talk more about that momentarily. 108.3 rush yards per game, not good. 
265.8 pass yards per game, probably higher than a lot of people uh, realized, and then 374 total yards per game as well. So um, actually it's the second highest in total yards per game behind the 2013 offense uh, when you're looking at uh, – these four offenses but as I said uh, skewed a little bit by Long Island talk about that momentarily Um, they've already given up 17 sacks though that's what stands out to me when I look at these numbers as I said the 2013 offense the whole year only gave up 16 so that kind of shows you how this offense is struggling are they going to give up 45 like the 2010 offense probably not but 17 already halfway through the season Um, you know if you equal that that's 34 so still very very bad and you know worse by a long shot than all these offenses minus 2010, which that 45 sacks 2010 had almost unheard of. So um, I think it just harkens back to the offensive line being the big issue with this offense. And uh, this offense has scored 20 touchdowns, rather, but nine of those came against Long Island. As I said, the numbers are a little bit skewed. So take out Long Island from those averages. West Virginia is only averaging 20.8 points per game. Not going to get it done, only scoring 21 points per game. Uh, 344 total yards per game and uh, 11 touchdowns. So. Without Long Island, it is the lowest in total yards per game. So uh, do with that what you will. Uh, to me, it says a lot that this offense is underperforming those offenses. But I think, you know, when you look at the sacks, already given up 17. I think that the offensive line is the main issue here that can be pointed to. Um, not only is their pass protection bad, but their run blocking has been even worse. And, West Virginia said during the bye week they put a lot of emphasis on the run game, so let's hope so. Let's hope that they did. Um, the offensive line is what really needs to improve the second half of the season for West Virginia to have some success offensively and especially the run game. The run game really needs to improve. So uh, that's just some offensive comparison stats I kind of wanted to look at and get into a little bit to show where this offense stands historically with some post-2000 uh, bad, other quote-unquote bad West Virginia offenses. Uh, but this one is uh, – it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle. So, um, you know, do with those numbers what you will. Make whatever judgments you may want to make about how bad this offense is. Or maybe you're looking on the other side. Maybe, wow, that's better than I thought. Because I'll tell you right now, West Virginia is second in the Big 12 in passing offense. Uh, Jared Dagey, you know, actually putting up some decent numbers there, you know, and say what you will about Jared Dagey. We've said our pieces about him on the show here multiple times, as I'm sure a lot of West Virginia fans have as well. But second in the Big 12 in passing yards is never a bad thing. But then when you flip that on the other side, West Virginia leads the conference in sacks by a wide margin. So, um, you know, that's not getting it done. It doesn't matter who you have back there if you can't block for them. And that's the big issue of this offense. But uh, offensive comparison stats, wanted to get in that. Let's talk a little bit about the matchups here against TCU. Uh, when West Virginia's on defense, the TCU offense, uh, they want to run the football. It's no secret, I think. They have two good running backs. Uh, Zach Evans is the main one. Um, he's been dealing with some injury issues, but I believe he's going to play. And uh, I don't know if he still is, but for a while he was leading the Big 12 in rushing yards per game. So very so- solid back there in Zach Evans. I think he was a five-star guy. I believe he's a sophomore this year. But uh, really good back there in Zach Evans. And then, of course, the quarterback, Max Duggan, um, he can throw. He's really improved that this year, but he really will hurt you with his feet. Very fast quarterback, maybe the fastest quarterback in the conference that West Virginia will face. So got to deal with one of those uh, rushing quarterbacks again uh, this week. And West Virginia needs to really stop that run game. But when TCU does take to the air, you're going to be looking at a passing attack that will really look to get the ball deep to Quentin Johnson. That's a guy, I believe he's number nine, if I'm not mistaken. Six foot four guy, really made some plays in their last game against Oklahoma last week. Went up and lost some guys that I saw. So if TCU takes the air, West Virginia needs to have their eyes on uh, Quentin Johnson, a guy that could really take the top off and, you know, go up and get it. As Neil Brown likes to say, a guy that's open by birth, you know, just by having that height that he has. Hopefully, West Virginia saw that on film and is, we'll find some ways to stop that because West Virginia's secondary in this one. Uh, a little bit of news, uh, Darrell Middleton, the transfer from Tennessee, has also hit the transfer portal again, defensive lineman. But as far as affecting the secondary, Kerry Martin, a home state guy from uh, West Virginia, played at Capitol, uh, was quarterback there. Uh, started as a true freshman for West Virginia, sat out last year uh, with the COVID year, uh, opted out. Uh, of course, the whole coning situation, of course, we all know that's well documented. But uh, – Decides to hit the transfer portal as well, and that is a guy that ha- had played sparingly but was refereeing his backup cat safety. So now you'll see true freshman Davis Ballinger in there as the uh, backup at cat safety. A little bit of transfer news there. I, I wanted to touch on that before I got in the matchups. Forgot, but talking about the secondary made me think of it. So 
Uh, just to toss that in there. But then we'll flip it over on the other side. We'll talk about the TCU defense versus West Virginia offense. Uh, TCU does ha- normally have a good defense. That's what you know You know Gary Patterson is known for. But, however, this has kind of been the aberration of that. This TCU defense, while not – technically bad per se is not up to uh, you know TCU typical standards they do have some solid guys on the defensive line I think a couple of good rush ins and uh, a couple of solid players on that D line there but they have been susceptible to the run and uh, watching a few of their highlights watching you know bits and pieces of their games there have been running lanes for other teams to run through and uh, West Virginia, you know, I said they emphasize the run, rushing attack during the bye week West Virginia needs the rushing attack to get going that's what's really hurt this offense is the lack of a run game. I think we can all agree that outside of the Virginia Tech game, the run game has struggled. Even against Long Island, the run game struggled. So, West Virginia has a good opportunity to get back on track with an extra week to work on that and a TCU team that is shown to be vulnerable to uh, to a good rushing attack. And West Virginia has a good running back. Let's just hope the offensive line is starting to gel. They figured some things out. During the bye week, maybe, you know, hey, we're not doing this good. Let's take this out. Hey, we're doing this really good. Let's. How can we build upon that? And I think having that extra week to prepare is going to help West Virginia. And, um, you know, like I said, this TCU defense is not typically as good as it normally is. So maybe we'll see the West Virginia offense find some things in this one. I think they have the opportunity to for sure. That being said, uh, talked a little bit of the news, talked a little bit of the matchups. Uh, we'll go ahead and get into key to victory and score prediction. Uh, before we do that, I do want to remind y'all to follow us on the social medias at WVU Country Roads on Twitter. Uh, we always announce, you know, when our live stream on Sunday is going to be there. And, of course, during the games, usually have a live tweet, in-game feed uh, going throughout the game. That's always fun to follow along. So definitely do that. And, of course, like us on Facebook. And then subscribe to us on YouTube now. We're trying to grow that up here in the fourth season of the podcast. Just search Country Roads Webcast. Subscribe to us there for the video version of all these podcasts as well as uh, the reaction show live streaming there and on our Facebook page. And then, of course, you can find us on all the platforms um, that I named earlier. Uh, like us, subscribe to us there, and leave us a review if you'd like. That always helps as we continue to try and grow the show through Mountaineer Nation. Uh, that being said, key to victory here against TCU I think I've talked about it. Uh, it's ru- it's the running game, you know. Uh, not only stopping TCU's, which I think should be, excuse me, should be the key for West Virginia's defense, but uh, West Virginia getting a rushing attack going, I think, is going to be vital if West Virginia wants to come out and win this game and really start some good momentum for these final six games of the season. Because West Virginia is going to have to go to four and two, go four and two in these final six games if they want to get to a bowl game. Do I think that is? Uh, Likely, probably not. It's possible, yes, but I think it becomes way less possible if they don't win this one against TCU. I think this is a must win if you want to try and reach bowl eligibility or at least, you know, have a positive uh, final six games here for West Virginia. They need to do something against TCU, and I think the way that they do that is uh, finding a way to run the football. As I said, TCU's shown that they're vulnerable there. West Virginia worked on it throughout the bye week. And as I've stated previously on the show here, since Neil Brown took over West Virginia, that's when they found success. West Virginia is 9-0 and when they rush for over 100 yards as a team since Neil Brown's been the coach. So got to get that run game going. That's my key to victory. As far as score prediction, I know I've been the negative Nancy here on the show, as the guys would like to call me, you know, when I've been able to been on here uh, this season. But – um, I've got a good feeling about this one for whatever reason, whether it's the extra week to prepare. I think the coaches know that it's desperation time. And I think more than anything, the coaches want to see effort, and they need the fans to see that effort because I think we can all agree against Baylor, it almost looked like there was a lack of effort. So I think getting this team prepared and coming out and getting these guys and showing that these players and the people within that facility are still bought in and still trusting the climb is going to be big for West Virginia. And I think that this is a game you're going to see West Virginia come out with energy. And um, I think they're going to come out and show, hey, we're, we're not giving up yet. We're still bought in. We're still trusting the climb. We're still going to give it our all these final six games. And West Virginia, you know, they haven't won a road game since 2019. Seven straight road losses. Or is eight, seven or eight, I think it's seven right now. But the last road game they won at TCU in Fort Worth. So, um, you know, hopefully history repeats itself in this one. Um, they're going down there. Night game. I believe that one was a night game as well. I do remember it finishing off at night. Jared Dagey hitting Esdale for what was the game-winning touchdown in the corner of that end zone back in 2019. So hopefully history repeats itself. But going to Fort Worth to take on TCU, 7:30 game on ESPNU. My prediction: I think the Mountaineers get back on get back on the winning side of things. I think they rush for over 100 yards as a team, and ergo 
they get the win. I got West Virginia winning this one 28 to 21. Surprising, I know. I haven't picked them to win a lot this season, but I got a good feeling about this one, and I think that they're going to be hungry. I think they've worked on some things over the bye week, and I think that the, we'll see the West Virginia run game get going, and that's going to lead to not only a win, but the first Big 12 win of the year for West Virginia and the first road win in a couple years for West Virginia. So uh, it's a big game all around uh, for this staff, for this fan base. Um, I think everyone needs to see us get back on track and, and play with effort and play with heart and, you know, uh, play Mountaineer football. And I think that we got a good chance to see that. I like this matchup for West Virginia. Um, you know, call me crazy, but call it intuition, call it whatever you want to call it. But I like this matchup. I think West Virginia wins 28-21, uh, to 21, gets back on the winning side of things and uh, starts this final six games off following the bye week uh, the right way. So let's hope I'm right. And if so, we'll be back to talk about it on the – uh, TCU reaction show that will be live streaming on our Facebook and YouTube. As I said, follow us on Twitter at WVU Country Roads for the announcement of what time that will be on Sunday. And hopefully all three of us will finally be able to get back together again for the first time in a while. Um, I'm liking the odds of that, and hopefully things are going to slow down for us. But until then, as always, I'm your host, Jordan Cruz. And until next time, let's go Mountaineers. If you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those